The state of Oklahoma will soon execute James Coddington on August 25, 2022, for the murder of Albert Hale. The parole board recommends life in prison, but it's not up to them. A man named Kevin decides who lives and who dies in the Sooner State. I'm your host, TD, and welcome to Sick World. I've never forgot Al. He was one of my friends, and he tried his best to help me every time I needed it. For that, he lost his life. 25-year-old James Coddington was an addict on a three-day cocaine binge in March of 1997. Out of money and itching for a score, Coddington began robbing convenience stores and was arrested for five counts of robbery with a dangerous weapon. Looking at life behind bars, Coddington decided to confess to one more crime, the murder of his friend, Albert Hale. He and Hale worked together for three years at Honda Auto Parts in Choctaw, Oklahoma, and they would even often eat lunch together. On March 5, 1997, Coddington went to 73-year-old Albert Hale's house to see if he could borrow $50 to buy more cocaine. Hale refused to give him any money and told him he needed to get some help and treatment for his drug habit. Enraged and needing money for drugs, Coddington saw a claw hammer on Hale's dishwasher. He picked it up and brutally attacked the elderly man in his kitchen, beating him to within an inch of his life. Bloodied and unconscious, Coddington took $525 out of Hale's front pocket and fled the scene. Hale eventually succumbed to the multiple head injuries and died in the hospital after being found by his son, Ron. Coddington's later confessions of armed robbery and the murder of his co-worker, Albert Hale, led him to submit a guilty plea, and the trial was about whether or not he would be charged with first or second degree murder, the former carrying a penalty of death by lethal injection. The jury deliberated for 11 and a half hours and ultimately found Coddington guilty of first degree murder. 25 years have passed since the brutal murder of Albert Hale and the Oklahoma Parole Board heard Coddington's final plea before his scheduled execution on August 25, 2022. Coddington's attorney presented a 139-page packet to the Parole Board showing how Coddington has changed. The cover photo is on screen, and the packet presents his sterling behavioral prison record, how he achieved his GED, shared his difficult upbringing, claims to be a new man after finding God, and has accepted responsibility for his crimes, showing great remorse for his actions. And I can't apologize enough for, for what I did. And for someone to say I don't care and that I have no remorse is the only thing that, that I have to say is not true. The board also heard from the victim's children, who believe justice for their dad means death for Coddington. Hale's daughter Carrie said, please give my dad justice and my family closure. Give James Coddington the same sentence he gave my dad. And she was not the only one. Hale's son Mitch made his request for the parole board known as well. I am here to say that I forgive James Coddington. My forgiveness does not release him from the consequences of his actions. After hearing from Coddington's attorney, Coddington himself, and the victim's family, the Oklahoma Parole Board recommended the governor commute Coddington's sentence to life in prison without the possibility of parole in a vote of three to two. Scott Williams. And no clemency. Richard Smotherman. Yes. Larry Morris. Yes. Ed Kanyechny. Yes, life without parole. Stoker? No. Clemency has been recommended. The board's recommendation now goes to Kevin Stitt, the governor of Oklahoma, and he has the option to accept, reject, or modify the board's recommendation. The governor is not new to this, and his track record in these situations would imply a 50-50 chance for Coddington, as Stitt once granted clemency to Julius Jones after a recommendation from the board, and once rejected a recommendation, that of Bigler Stouffer, who was executed in December of 2021. But I don't think James Coddington is looking at a coin flip. Governor Stitt once asked the chair of the parole board, Adam Luck, to resign from his position because of a difference in beliefs. Unlike Luck, Stitt believes in capital punishment, which does not bode well for Coddington's plea for life in prison. Furthermore, Governor Stitt has been burned by one of these decisions before. Adam Luck and the parole board recommended the release of a criminal named Lawrence Anderson back in 2020 instead approved the recommendation. Less than a month after Anderson's release, he cut the heart out of a woman, cooked it, then tried to feed it to his relatives before killing two more people. 
Governor Stitt showed mercy and got rewarded with a grisly triple homicide. I don't know what James Coddington's fate will be, but what troubles me most is the judicial process in this case. Kevin Stitt is being forced to play judge, jury, and executioner, and I'm not being dramatic. The purpose of Coddington's trial after he entered a plea of guilty was to determine if he deserved life in prison or death by lethal injection, which is the exact same decision Governor Stitt is left with. If this is the process, then why even have a judge or jury? You know what, let's lock this guy up for a quarter century and we'll ask a guy named Kevin what he thinks we ought to do when the time comes. It just seems ludicrous to me for one person to make this decision. The judicial process literally boiled down from judges, juries, appeals, and boards to a question for one man, Governor Kevin Stitt. Not that our opinion matters any more than the juries, but what do you think? Should the death penalty be legal? Should James Coddington face lethal injection? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more creepy content on the frighteningly real and fictional things of this world. Thanks for watching, and until next time.